everybody, it's Natalie with Treasures of Mini, and today I'm going to make a, another no stamping Halloween card. And as promised, I'm going to be using the Goosebumps Shimmer Texture Spray. So this is a old pizza box that I use as a spritz box, and I'm going to be using this Goosebumps Textured Spray, and I'm just going to give it a few squirts on the piece of paper just because I want to leave some white spots in the end. So I'm just, you know, kind of randomly squirting a little bit here and there. And as you see, I'm going to turn the bottle upside down and spray it. That's how you clear the, the nozzle out so it won't dry and get all clogged in there. So I'm just going to hit this with my heat tool for a second to dry it up. It doesn't take very long. Now I'm going to wet my entire piece of paper with water. And I'm going to be using my ink tense pencils here. And as you can see, I'm taking my paintbrush is very, very wet, and I'm just flicking um, this color all over the paper, and then I'm kind of spreading it around. And all I'm doing is flicking, and this is um, dark purple 0750. Now I'm going to um, dry it, and it wasn't quite as intense as I wanted, so I re-wet the entire piece of paper again, and I'm going back with some more of that dark purple. And I'm, there's no rhyme or reason to this. So I actually re-dried it before I did that. And I gave it another spritz of the Goosebumps. And now I'm drying that layer as well. Then I'm going to go in again doing the same process. But this time I'm going to use Fuchsia. And I did wet my piece of paper again. And now with a very wet paintbrush, I'm just flickering the color where I want it. And you could do as little or as much as you want. Um, I decided to add just a little bit more of that purple in with the fuchsia because I just thought it was really pretty. Because it's supposed to be kind of like a night scary sky. And so I'm just using the fuchsia again. And I'm going to hit it with my heat tool and dry it. And then um, when it's dry, I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to wipe off the surface very, very well and you'll be able to see what ends up happening. Now, as you can see, I have some of the original purple right here, or the second purple. This was the white. So these bright white spots are where we sprayed it in the beginning. And then you can see the lighter purple right here. That was our first layer. And then we had the fuchsia that you could see. So I stuck it back in my box and I gave it another spray with the goosebumps again you know, just kind of wherever you might want that pink fuchsia to shine through. Excuse me. Then I re-wet a section of my paper, and I'm using um, some red oxide in one corner. And then on this other corner here, I wet it, and I'm putting in poppy red. And then here at the bottom... I'm putting in some sun yellow. Now, in hindsight, I really should have done these light reds and the yellows first, but I didn't. I didn't think about it correctly. But next time, do your lighter colors first and then work your way out. That last color I just put in was some teal green. So I'm going to zap it with my heat tool and make sure it's all nice and dry. Then come in with my baby wipe and just really rub it. You do have to kind of press down on this a little bit. And now you can see all these pretty layers. So I want to do another layer. So I'm zapping it again. Well, not zapping. I'm spraying some more goosebumps on it, drying that up, wetting my whole piece of paper again. And now I'm going in with, this will be my last one. This is sea blue. I'm going to do it all over the paper. And I'm just kind of moving it around. And you're just trying to make a dark sky. And then I'm going to go in with this deep indigo and just kind of add some darker spots and just a little bit of ink black for the last little bit. And then I'm going to dry this really good with my heat tool again. So this is kind of a process, but it really doesn't take that long. I mean, I think overall it took me like 15 minutes. So you can watch here. You see how it's kind of muted and watch when I take my baby wipe, you can start seeing all of the different layers like right here you see how i'm wiping it off and there was the white so this is our finished back piece and you can do this with bright light colors and have all kinds of layers but this is for the halloween card so i wanted it to be kind of dark so now i have a piece of 
black card stock that I have cut and scored to be a top folding A2 size card. And you can see that I didn't have the camera going, but this was a, this striped embossed striped was actually another piece of card stock from Stampin' Up! that I had already glued down without the card, uh, without the video camera going. And so I'm, I do apologize for that. But I just cut it a quarter of an inch shorter, um, smaller than the panel of your card base. So I'm going to make this a strip across the center. And as you can see, it's not glued down over there. I just laid it on there for you to see how I cut it. And then I'm going to use, again, the Little B Halloween word set. And I'm going to use Trick or Treat. And I'm just kind of putting them on there where I think that I want it. And um, once again, that... That watercolor piece is not glued down. I just kind of wanted you to see, you know, my thought process of where I, where I was going here. So I'm going to take that over to my Big Shot, and I'm going to cut it out of just the watercolor piece. You can see it over there in the top right-hand corner. Now I'm going to take the exact same words, and I'm going to cut out the words Trick or Treat and some bright orange glitter paper. Now, um, I still don't have that water piece paper glued down. I'm just kind of showing you so you can get an idea. But I want to tell you, I ended up having to recut the trick-or-treat out because I forgot to make sure that you save all the little center bits from your words. Because when we inlay the trick-or-treat, the glitter orange trick-or-treat in, we're going to need the little tiny pieces from the watercolor piece to put back in the small areas, like for the the O and the A, that kind of thing. So now I'm taking some Tombow Mono and I glued that piece down. And now I'm going, I've got my Tombow Mono again and I'm filling up the word trick. And then I'm going to take my orange glitter piece that says trick and I'm going to lay it in there. So you're inlaying into a die cut. And I'm going to do that with the rest of the words and then I'm going to go back and you can see I have my tweezers here. I put a little bit of glue in those open pieces. And then I'm going to lay in the those little middle pieces. I don't, I don't know why I can't think of what to call them. But you can see it done here. So all the little pieces are laid back in. So make sure you hold on to the little, beat, the little bits. So for some last little touches, I'm going to do some of these little candy corn um, little embellishments and some um, sequins here and I think you guys know now I just kind of like to lay my stuff out on my card and play with a lot because I'm not really that good with sequins or I don't feel like I am I see other people's cards and I just think oh my gosh their sequins are perfect and I feel like I have to really play with mine to get them look right and even then I'm still not completely happy but Anyway, I'm just going to finish laying these sequins out the best that I can. I'm just kind of playing with them on my card. And once I've decided that I really kind of have them where I think they look best, um, I go in with some multi-matte medium. And I perform a little card surgery um, and get them all glued down. I mean, there's really... You just lay them down until they, they're what you like to where, you know, I mean, it's your card. It's not store-bought. It's your card. Anyway, I'm going to actually use my hot glue gun to glue down these candy corn embellishments. And then I'm going to use my multi-matte medium to glue down my sequins and my um, tweezers. And this is honestly the best way that I have found that works for me and I know a lot of other ladies like Jennifer McGuire and Christina Warner also use this technique and I think I've told you before this little bottle is multi matte medium it was just a little bottle that um, my husband actually had and he asked me if I wanted it and I love it it's tiny it's got a tiny tip so when I get a new bottle of multi matte medium I usually just um, squirt it into here I'm not really sure why I'm always changing the bottles of my glue, but I do the same thing with my Tombow Mono. So this is um, pretty much our card for today. I hope you really enjoyed it. I have really been enjoying trying to come up with different ways to make different holiday, holiday cards without having to go out and buy stamp sets. Um, I'll be honest, I don't send out a lot of 
Halloween card, so it's really nice to be able to have some of the cards without needing to have the stamp set. Please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you enjoyed, and I really would love to see some of your guys' ideas, or if you have any ideas for me on how to create some more Halloween cards with no stamping. Until next time, hugs and love from my craft room to yours.